Hey guys, it's Michelle from Florida Keys Birding and I've got a question for you. Can you spot the spotted sandpiper? It tends to blend in quite well with its surroundings. The spotted sandpiper is actually only spotted half the year, not the whole year. Maybe it should actually be called the half spotted sandpiper or maybe the sometimes spotted sandpiper or the somewhat spotted sandpiper instead. Well, regardless, the name is pretty self-explanatory though in this case. In breeding season, spotted sandpipers have bold, dark spots on their bright white breast and an orange bill. The back is like a dark brown color. But in the winter time, the spotted sandpiper's breast is not spotted, it's plain white, while the back is a grayish brown and the bill is pale yellow, so it looks a little bit different in the winter time. In flight, the spotted sandpiper has a thin white stripe along the wing. The spotted sandpiper's favorite thing to do, besides eat and forage, is dance. Dance, you say? Yes, they actually usually like to dance alone. But according to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, they actually walk with what is called a distinctive teeter, bobbing their tails up and down constantly. But I say they just really like to break it down. My favorite kind of music to watch the Spotted Sandpiper dance to is reggaeton beats. Like could you imagine the Spotted Sandpiper breaking it down to some J Balving or like some Bad Bunny or something like that? It's pretty funny if you think about it. It's the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually fun to watch them dance to just about anything. So when they're foraging though, they'll walk quickly, crouching low, occasionally darting towards their prey, all the while while bobbing their tails. So not only is their dance bob distinctive, their flight style is equally distinctive. Low over the water with stuttering bursts of fast wing beats with very brief glides. They like to hang out dance, eat, and forage near water, along streams and banks, rivers, ponds, lakes, and beaches, particularly on rocky shores. Their favorite things to eat are midges, mayflies, flies like aquatic type larvae, grasshoppers, beetles, worms, snails, and small crustaceans, small fish, and they also may pick at dead fish and eat them as well. Hmm. Well, isn't that nice? Spotted sandpipers are continuously active foragers, so when you're observing them, you can tell that they probe their beaks into the sand and the mud like the usual sandpipers do. Something else fun that they like to do is lunge at moving prey. Maybe they want to show them who's boss, like, hey, hey, freeze, I'm about to eat you. <laughs> they also will pick insects off plants and snap at airborne prey. So something you may not know is that sandpipers were one of the first bird species described in which the roles of the females and the males are reversed. Hmm, that sounds like a controversial topic in today's age, but we won't get into that though. So in this way, males are usually smaller, less aggressive, and tend to nest the young. The larger females actually fight for territories and may mate with more than one male. Hmm. I guess they are the more independent women of the bird world. So actually, the males that mate with the same females will set up smaller territories within her territory and defend them against each other. So if you can picture it, you've got the one female that's kind of like the boss and you've got a bunch of males around her and they've got their nesting sites and like maybe she's in the middle or something and then they set up all their little nests like around her. I don't know. I guess that's what's happening here. I don't know. This is the, this is the mental picture that I'm getting. <laughs> of the sandpiper nesting. I don't know, maybe this is how it goes. Um, so the males tend to actually have more of the pituitary hormone prolactin than the females. And the hormone prolactin promotes prenatal care, which may actually explain how the roles are reversed and develop each season. Well, isn't that a fun fact? I mean, I guess it makes sense because that's kind of the same way with humans. Women, we have more prolactin and stuff like that. Um, 
yeah, some other things come to mind, but we're not going to go there. The females are actually the ones who perform the courtship behavior, so this is backwards as well for most birds. Not a surprise there, since these are quite independent women. They usually do an elaborate swooping flight with wings held open while the bird gives its wheat wheat song. They may also have a strutting courtship display from the ground. Females that are looking for males over a wide area may do this up and down for considering lengths of time uh, uh, across the shoreline. Interested males remain on the territory while uninterested males get chased away. Wow, she's not playing any games there <laughs> at all. She's like, get out of here. You're not going to make it. Just, just go. So males and females aren't picky apparently when it comes to who gets to choose a good spot. So they nest usually in a place that's located near the edge of a body of water of some kind, usually within about 100 yards of the shore placed under a shade of a broadleaf plant. This makes me think about the spotted sandpipers that are at Penny Camp near where I live. And there's a couple of them that are kind of always there all the time. So now I just kind of want to go look for the nest now that I know where they're nesting. I mean, I don't want to like do anything to it. I just kind of want to know where it's at. Maybe I could catch some pictures or some videos of some babies. I don't know, would be kind of cool. Um, so something else that they consider if there's too many predators around the nest is more likely to be under thicker vegetation Such as raspberries or nettles. We don't really have raspberries here, but um, maybe if you're in a place that does um, Another area that they'll that they'll use um, for their nesting if need be are farm ponds wetlands that are created by mining operation and even gravel pits it makes me think about that song, check out my gravel pit, <laughs> you know, like by Wu-Tang. Yeah, yeah, so um, they also like to nest near or within common turn colonies with the species that is present. So they all just have one big nesting party, I guess. That's, that's kind of cool. I, I would like to see that. So when spotted sandpipers decide they were going to get together and make some babies, nest building is an important part of courtship. They will build a few uh, practice nests first, um, but once they're ready to build the actual nest, it will be about two to three inches deep, scraped out of soil, and they'll line it with some dead grass and woody type material. Usually the female will start it and the male will be the one to finish it. So they work together, so that's good. At least she lets them do something here. <laughs> you know, like she's so bossy. <laughs> <laughs> um, the spotted sandpiper parents will usually have uh, three to five eggs and I thought that was pretty um, interesting because um, that's a lot of babies to take care of and feed compared to most other birds who just have maybe like one or two and this is even more crazy they actually have between one and five broods a season so that means that she does her babies like she could do it up to five broods and imagine if she had five eggs and five broods that would be like 25 babies <laughs> 25 spotted sandpiper babies that's that's a lot so those sandpipers are getting busy with those babies i'm telling you they don't uh they don't play around they are cranking those babies out um but i did figure out why maybe it is easier for easier Oh my goodness easier for them to have more babies though um, apparently the babies are born with some downy feathers they are coordinated and their eyes are open and they're quickly able to begin eating and walking well that makes sense because most other babies um, are born blind and helpless so there's much less to deal with if your babies can come out walking and eating i guess you can have more and you can do more with them it probably doesn't take as much energy to to raise them so so that makes sense so as you would probably guess these birds are low on the conservation concern i mean with their prolific breeding and everything um hey they aren't going anywhere anytime soon but we do need to be concerned with wetland habitat loss as always um, compromised water quality, pesticides, herbicides, and other, the other things that can run off into the water can harm the sandpiper's ability to feed and raise young. And considering how many babies they raise, this is something that we should really support and think about. Because who would want to lose all these dancing spotted sandpipers? These little birds love to eat, mate, and jam to awesome tunes when they walk. So let's keep them protected. 
keep jamming away, Spotted Sandpiper.